Hi, this is Debbie and I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodling with Debbie series for Simon Says Stamp. This month it is all about the Distress, Distress Oxide blending. Did you see Christina Werner's look at the new Distress Colour Speckled Egg? So fabulous and her Distress Oxide combinations are always spot on. I have Speckled Egg on its way to me but in the meantime I thought I'd play with the colours I already have. I was really taken with the colour combination which Christina used of speckled egg with ripe persimmon and walnut stain. I switched out the speckled egg for tumbled glass instead. Starting with the tumbled glass and a blender brush from Samsi Stamp, I gently blended ink over a piece of Nina Solo White card on a tonic craft sheet. I started light but quickly realised that for this piece I really needed to get lots of ink on there. I blended the tumbled glass over the best part of two thirds of the panel and then bought in ripe persimmon. Ripe persimmon, I'm struggling with my words today. This is a strong colour and quickly filled the space. I then followed up with walnut stain at the bottom. These colours took some blending as you will see. I went back and forth with the three colours until I had a blend I liked. I liked the orange toning down the blue and equally the blue toning down the orange until the end result was a hazy misty flow from one colour to the next. I took some time to dry the piece as I've added a lot of wet ink and I'm going to heat emboss over this ink and I don't want the embossing powder sticking everywhere to wet ink. So I dried the panel, tested it by sprinkling on powder and I was getting a little powder stuck so I wiped that away and dried the panel some more. I did this two or three times before I was happy. Alternatively you could leave the panel to dry for a bit but I'm impatient and wanted to keep filming. The suite of products I'm using today are all from Samsung Stamp's new release. Centercut Hexagon Floral Background and Hexagon Greetings with the matching die. All three are intended to be used together. I placed the Centercut Hexagon Floral Background in the Misty and removed the centerpiece. You can stamp this background as a whole, but removing the centerpiece gives you options to add sentiments from the Hexagon Greetings set or die cut with a Hexagon Greetings die. Having lined up where I wanted the open areas to be on my panel, I kept it in place with tape and then treated the card with anti-static powder. I then stamped the design in Versmark ink and taking a tip from Kathy Zilski, I gently rubbed over the misty with a cloth to help get a good stamped impression. I then sprinkled on white embossing powder, holding the edges of the card to prevent oils from my hands attracting the powder. I moved around the piece, making sure everywhere was fully covered, and then tapped off any excess before melting the embossing powder with a heat tool. For me, embossing after ink blending gives the best results as the embossed powder stays clean and bright rather than blending over a pre-embossed design and having to wipe and clean up the embossed lines afterwards. The only cleaning up doing it this way is to wipe away any excess anti-static powder. With the background piece now embossed, I debated the different ways I could use the other products in the suite. Either die cut the embossed panel directly and add something into the open space or stamp and die cut a hexagon greeting to foam mount over the open space or equally stamp directly into the open space for a one layer design. I decided to go with the first option and to help me die cut the hexagon precisely I die cut a template first. I aligned the hexagon exactly where I wanted it and lightly taped it down then placed the template over the top and taped that in place before carefully removing the hexagon. I then taped the die in place and ran it through my die cutting machine. I first saw this style of die cutting from Michelle Short and it is an excellent way to get um, a die cut exactly where you want to. Now I did make one rookie mistake here and that is I didn't take some of the sticky off the washi tape by dabbing it on my clothes for example before adhering it to my panel and as a result when I lifted a couple of the washi pieces they stuck slightly and pulled at the paper. However, I love this piece and I'm not going to start again, so I fully intend to use the panel, but I'll cover my mistake up and you'll see how shortly. With the open area now die cut with a matching hexagon, you could add this back in with a sentiment stamped on it and foam mounted. I trimmed the panel to be slightly smaller than an A2 card base and decided I liked the look of the panel over the ivory card, with the card colour showing through the hexagon window. 
I decided to stamp a hexagon greeting directly on the card base so it lined up with the embossed panel window. I placed the card base in the misty, lined up where I wanted the panel to sit and then nested the hexagon greeting in place. I shut the door of the misty to pick up the stamp and then removed the embossed panel before treating the card with anti-static powder and stamping the greeting in Versmark ink. For the greeting I chose antique gold embossing powder so that it would show up nicely against the ivory card. I added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and lined it up over the greeting to adhere in place. Now to hide those imperfections and also take the card up a notch with a few embellishments. I dug around in my stash and found some old enamel dots which toned perfectly. These are from Simple Stories. I don't see these exact ones still available, but there are many beautiful colours that still are. I then added droplets of Nouveau Duck Egg Crystal Drops to tone uh, the muted down tumbled glass. And finally added a couple of my favourite eggshell pearls from Little Things from Lucy's Cards, kept in place with Gina K Connect Glue. I added these embellishments to discreetly cover up my washi tape rookie mistakes and all the time their triangle formation draws attention to the greeting too. Well that's me for this time, I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at LimeDudeDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notifi notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.